you know, and that's a great mm. story. But then you just imagine just how much poisoning is going on, you know? So these are objects. Yeah, well, it of was the only democratic way to get rid of. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's the social democratic view <laughs> from Vienna. Um, but this is this is this is Kunstkammer material. This is this is, you know, real. These are real objects of of complexity, um, and you know, there's also this very profound thing, which is that it's one thing on top of another. So it's one thing which in some ways has been inscribed on another. So you have one material, you know, a, a, a petrified shark's tongue or a, a sh sh um, um, sh shark's um, teeth, teeth or, or, or a betel nut or, or a coconut, and, they're, and they're, they've come from so far, and they're re-inscribed. They're written over. And in some ways, this was my day six in the in the vaults of the, of the, uh, of the Kunstsorscher, they are, of course, in some ways, palimpsests. They are that thing where one thing, this is just walking down a, in the library, this incredibly beautiful, I'm so sorry you can't see it, it's absolutely stunning. It's a, <laughs> come later and see it. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a binding, it's an, a, a, a 17th century binding where they've used a part of a manuscript as part of the binding. And it's, it's that extraordinary sense, um, which is really important to me as, a, as an artist, of finding one thing and then writing over it. This is a fossilized fish with its inscription. So it becomes something else. It becomes textual. It moves into textuality. Um, or indeed, this wonderful thing, which is an ammonite. And everyone knows in the Middle Ages that ammonites are, 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 are snakes. They're dragons. So they just have to just make sure that everyone knows that yeah. a fossil is actually a snake, or, or, or by, by, by putting that, ex uh, this is so poignant. It's that, it's that extraordinary moment of just, just doing a couple of movements, a, a, a couple of graphic moments onto something. Or indeed, um, with this book, which is a, a, a critical thing for me, which is one of the great palimpsests in the library, where the whole binding is, is uh, of, a, of a 16th century book has been bound in a medieval manuscript, which has then been erased and rubbed back and rubbed back and rubbed back. So this is very much the heart of what I think, that's my take mm -hmm. on Kunstkammers. But God help me, I don't know if the proper man <laughs> asked. To, get, get, that's what I want to do. Yeah, if I'm allowed, and and so that that's also just to explain how how works uh, how how this project which Jasper Sharp uh, made for the Kunsthistorisches Museum how they work. Uh, artists are coming to our museum, and they get access to everything, can have a look at everything, and um, talking to curators, and curators have to kind of try to understand what's the, what's the uh, approach, which approach the artist has. Because of course, it's not, it would not be possible to see all 8,000 objects of the Kunstkammer in a week or so. And uh, so it's a, a good combination, walking through, through and digging, uh, really, uh, and trying to what, what's, what matches the idea of the artist. And it's, it's, it's obviously, extremely current because um, there's an extraordinary display here in um, uh, Friedman Bender. Is that correct? Is anyone going to say that? Yes. Loud. Sorry? Loud. Sorry. Say it louder. Um, you mean the one that kind of stands Yeah, yeah. Said Gail Glauer. Gail Glauer. Um, um, and, um, yeah, sorry, Gail Glauer. <laughs> and um, of, of extraordinary Wunderkammer material plus hmm. Um, an Eva Hess stack, um, or, 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 Richter. or a Richter. Um, now, it's interesting because, of course, what you start to do is to read is to read um, somatic movements, bodily movements. So you see, you see a very, very intricate piece of Bohemian Renaissance glass, which is that extraordinary glass with, with, with in incredible lines. And then up to the right is a very good, beautiful, early Agnes Martin drawing. Or you see a crumpled piece of cloth by someone. Who's in the Tate, the turbine hall? 
Tuttle, thank you, God help me on stage for getting it wrong. A Tuttle, a Tuttle, an early Tuttle textile piece, you know, which is just a, a kind of scrunching together of, of material. And you get an ivory, which has got that kind of the same kind of mark, or an Ava Hess stack. So what you've got there is a reading of Wunderkammer materials in terms of the kinds of actions you can do in the world, what you can do to material, which mm -hmm. is interesting. Inscribing, stacking, scrunching, wrapping, um, um, or, 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 or scribbling out with, with Agnes Martin, you know, in overlaying, palimpsesting. Um, and that seems to me a, a really legitimate way of taking on uh, of, of taking on this extraordinary wealth of material of the Kunstkammer, but it's not what I'm going to do. Mm. Because what I really, really want to do is to make a profoundly toxic exhibition in Vienna. Well, about I'm, I'm, I'm afraid now. Yeah, you should be <laughs> so afraid. I want to make a spectacularly anxious exhibition about anxiety which I think is something that is not, is not present, in, is not present in, our, in discourse around objects. Mm. And it's something I absolutely feel, that some objects are not about closing down what, the possibility of what objects can do, but they're about making them anxious, making, uh, making their presence felt in a very disturbing way. And I, I, I think if there's ever a museum in Europe that should have a little bit of anxiety. It should be in Vienna. It <laughs> should be in Vienna. So I'm not going to do a beautiful stacking contemporary, this is how minimalists can understand, understand it. I'm going to do something slightly different. And if I'm allowed, I want to reuse some of those great vitrines. I want to reuse, repurpose some of those great complicated Belle Epoque, Kunsthistorische, We Are Vienna vitrines and put objects back in very peculiar ways into them. I'm really selling myself. I look, you look so worried. I'm <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just thinking now to get an idea of how it, how it could be. No, but it leads me to a completely different thing, to yeah. a different questions which may be not so far from what we, uh, what you are seeing now because it's, yeah. Your approach is to take objects which are already there and to bring them into a different um, constellation, into a different concept. And something with this uh, different, with this exhibition, something should happen. It should, should lead to something. And that's, that's one question which is more about art and philosophy probably. We talked about it before. Do we need art to get a deeper understanding of things? Uh, how long have we got? <laughs> I mean, genu uh, genuinely. Could you say it in five minutes? No. Well, art obviously can, can, can do anything you want and nothing at all. Um, and that's the experience of this week in London. Um, which is cheap but true. But the extraordinary compulsion of the experiential un understanding of art that happens when you see something which is a reordering of the world takes you away. It takes you away from thought patterns, from emotions, from pleasures, from anxieties, and takes you somewhere completely different. And it's, it doesn't happen very often, but when it does happen, it is absolutely extraordinary. And it's very, very worth fighting for. Now, it's very complicated to do that mm. in institutions. It's complicated on all kinds of levels. It's complicated because people come to museums and to galleries in order to to see the things that they know are there. And they get cross if they're not there. And they come to, to walk through stories that matter to them and stories that they've been told matter by other people. So the idea of, of bringing together objects which are dissonant, which don't 
necessarily seem to to belong in the same place um, and and display them uh, in a way that isn't affected isn't about um, a spectacular showing off of, 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 of ideas but but to bring them in a dissonant way together um, so that you are taken away from what you thought you were going to see is hugely challenging it's hugely challenging I've since I said dissonance, I've got Alban Berg playing in my head, which is probably quite good for Vienna. But, um, sorry, I, that's a really stupid thing to say. I'm not going to talk about music, which is not, not what I want to talk about. Um, but actually, you know what? Um, the opportunity to do that is very, very extraordinary, and I'm incredibly privileged to be able to do it with your collections. Um, but how I do it um, with the whole of Imperial Habsburg uh, gilding sitting on my shoulders, plus being on the Ringstrasse, mm. plus being the fact that, you know, in square brackets, no, I'm not even going to the square brackets about family history, I, um, um, you know, is, is, it brings with it a certain anxiety in its train. So you're saying, why does art matter? And how can you make art work? And I suppose it's a long road. You know, you just have to go through all the many, many, many facile possibilities of what you could do and try and end up with something which is completely yeah. CI generous. Well, I, I've got right now in my mind is something completely different again, which is, again, not, not so completely different. Because in my understanding, you're, doing, you're looking at the object and, um, or a certain object and by displaying you somehow change their meaning with the all standing together. And that's something, that's an idea which uh, reminds me on, on, on one of the ideas of quantum physics, that you, uh, one of these ideas that an observable is uh, changed by the fact of being observed. In the moment when I look at an object, I change it. And that's something which is it, I mean, I mean, could we say that if you as an artist look at our collection with your eye, you do the same thing uh, with which happens in quantum physics? Well, it, it, you, every, every time you look at something, you know, it, it changes, obviously. It is, it, is, it is parallel in some ways, the quantum physics, though slightly compli complicated territory, but it's... It, um, but, but that, that idea of actually, when you look, you're actually changing through, through just simply the, your presence with the object, mm. you're changing the object, is of course exactly that slide which is behind us, yeah. looming beautifully over us, this idea of a palimpsest, which is that at every point, um, and it's not, it's not um, this, is, this is true, <laughs> that somehow, somehow all the resonances of other people who have looked at things remain within the object. I, it sounds that's utterly something specious. Which I wanted it sounds to know suspicious. I wrote a bloody book about it, but <laughs> that's not the problem. The thing is that actually objects do retain in some way the ways in which they've been made, obviously, but also the pulse of their making, you know, the, the kinds of ways in which they've come into creation, the places they come from, and the materiality, and their lithic qualities, the way they've been worked. But they also retain all those curatorial ways that they've been looked at. The fact that they've been in cupboards and brought out mm. and been at feasts and put away and forgotten and reinscribed and sold and lost and looted and all that stuff is still present within the objects.